Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the stream. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back. I know I'm a couple of days late here as far as my schedule of doing my streams, but uh, well, I've been hard at work. What are we working on? Well, the McDonnell Douglas F15C by Tamiya, 132nd scale. That's what we're doing. That's what I've been doing. I've been working on this thing all week. Um, basically, painting. As is with just about every airplane build, the first thing you would do is a cockpit. And that's what I've been working on. So I went and took a whole bunch of the pieces out, cut them off of the, the trees, sprues, runners, whatever you want to call them. I cut them all out and started painting. So, um, there's this. And you see this is kind of a bluey green color. That's the my reference pictures of the, um, what do they call it? The avionics bay, I think they call it, and behind the pilot. Um, my references were kind of a bluish green um, color that they paint in the back there. Now, of course, there isn't anybody who really makes that color. Um, so I went with the Mr. Color Metallic Green because the Tamiya version of the Metallic Green was like, I don't know, it was like a very bright green and I just, I didn't think that would really work. And of course, you guys know I don't use airbrushes, so mixing my own color and spraying really isn't an option. Now, of course, I could always brush paint the thing, but I hate doing that because I hate brush seeing brush strokes. And so that's why I like to spray as much as I can. Um, sorry, I just got something in my eye. Um, so I laid that down and I spray painted it green and I wasn't really happy with it. So I started going online to see if there is somebody that makes some color spray that I could use and um, I saw somebody mentioned doing a trick they spray painted with with uh, silver paint and then they painted metallic green and then they put clear blue over it or no sorry no 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 they went they went silver and then they did clear blue and clear green in a combination of doing that so I figured I'd experiment on that. Um, so I took my little Spitfire here and I spray painted them underneath there. I decided I'm gonna try using the clear green that I have here and just kind of modeled that over there. And uh, I spray painted silver here across here. And then I tried my clear blue and I tried the metallic green, and I tried doing laying down the green first on this side, and the blue first on this side, and then blue second and green second. And as you can tell, it's a little bit different. You can tell on the camera more than you can in real life. It's, this looks a lot more blue on the camera here, and this looks a little more green. In both cases, I wasn't very happy with it. So. So much for that trial. That didn't really work for me. So, what did I try doing? Um, I was at the hobby store the other day because I wanted to get a couple of a uh, couple of things. Um, in particular, the uh, model that I had ordered from them is going to be coming up soon. Another tank um, that came in. So I went to go pick that up, and I figured while I was there, I'd take a look at some paints and. Mr. Color makes this, and uh, this is, if I can read it here, metallic blue-green. Now, the camera of this just looks blue, sure, but in real life, this is kind of a bluish green with maybe a little more blue in it. Um, and this is, like, pretty close to what the actual thing looks like. The problem is they don't make it in a spray. It's only this. 
So I had to suck it up and I had to brush it off. And so that's what I did. So that's the final color. As you can see here, I didn't bother painting here because that's going to be covered by the, I don't know, you don't know what they're called, but the little drop down canister type things that look like big batteries of some sort. These things. I don't even know. I'm not I'm not versed enough in all the stuff uh, with the particulars of aircraft. I don't know what these things do, but these go on here like that. So I didn't bother repainting it. So you can tell that's much more green than the bottom here, than the floor. Okay? So that's what I did. Um, started off obviously with the metallic green and then painted over it with this. And that gave me a color that I'm happy with. So what else did I do this week? Well, obviously I painted these. And uh, I did a lot of painting. I painted a seat. This is a seat that's going to go in here. Okay. Now, I know, I'm, I'm sorry guys, I actually did some assembly on the seat. So, like I said in part one, uh, this kit comes with two seats. So you can kind of tell the difference here. Um, this one has no back. There actually is a back on the seat. Um, I put the, uh, I don't know, what is it? It's not CO2, but it, the, uh, the bottle on there on the side for the ejection. And I uh, put the top on the seat. There's little things there. That's obviously not on this one. Put them on here. And that's about it for the assembly. Okay. And obviously painted it up and got the seat. I did all the painting on the dials um, on there. I painted up his control panels on for each side. Okay. Um, painted these. This is going to be the back panel. And um, now this, I confess, this little thing here. Um, okay, come on, focus. Where's my cardboard? Just a second. Just a second. I know the camera always gives me a headache when it comes to focusing, so here we go. Okay, so all those little I don't know what they are. They're like some kind of fuses. And I looked in the reference pictures of this thing. Um, this panel is some kind of a fuse panel of some sort. I'm not sure exactly. I, I don't know. But they look like fuses. They're things that you can actually pull out. Um, anyway. So I didn't actually paint those. Those are part of the this kit. The um, This kit by uh, Red Fox Studios. For the F-15, okay. Um, as again, that stupid camera doesn't want to focus. There we go. This guy, quick set, 3D acrylic instrument panels. So you get all of them there for this kit, okay. And so it's just the front and back of the card. You get nice little instructions um, showing you exactly which panels which pieces you're going to be replacing out of the kit, okay? Where exactly they all go, and everything. And they're all numbered and everything like that, and you get all that detail, and it's, it's really, it's a really cool kit. If you're building this plane, and you suck at painting instrument panels, this definitely is the kit to go with. Um, here's what they look like when they're all installed on your panels. Um, it looks really good and very crisp and clear and precise. Um, it looks really good, right? In fact, it looks so good. I'm going to show you. I'm going to change my view here, um, just so you can see even better what these things look like up close. Um, stay in focus, please. I know you can focus. There we go. See, it looks fantastic. The, the detail that they have on them is just incredible. Come on, focus. Yeah, it's just remarkable. 
the uh, the detail. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do it, but it looks fantastic. So there's the seat. There's the side panel. This is a divider wall here that's going to go like this, like that. This guy's going to go in there like that. Here's the back wall. It's going to go on there. Okay. Uh, what else we got? So I painted up these. Those are done. I got the top cover, whatever you call that part. That's done. We got our little divider piece here. This goes on the back here like that or the top. But the main show is this. Now, I've assembled this. I didn't bother. I was planning on doing a video kind of just um, showcasing how to build or how to assemble the Ares cockpit. Um, because it can be a little bit confusing. Just a little bit. It's not much. This is it. It's the Ares 2063. Okay, for the F15 132nd scale Tamiya. Okay, and so this this cockpit is specifically for this kit, and that's great. Um, so I tried looking. I wanted to get just. I had a couple of questions when it came comes to assembling this piece, and I wasn't quite sure. So I looked on, tried looking online for a video that showed them actually assembling this thing. And, well, there is a video of a guy building this particular Tamiya kit and he puts this cockpit in it. But he doesn't really go into a lot of detail on the cockpit assembly so much. And um, so it's he just kind of he's kind of like me in part one you see i've got this in pieces and i'm just painting it and now in part two it's fully assembled but i'm going to do what he didn't and i'm going to go through the assembly on this so there's not a heck of a lot of pieces to it um for example uh the seat is kind of one piece you don't have to glue the back onto it unlike the tamiya kit as far as detail comparison between the Tamiya seat and this seat, I think the detail is it's negligible. Yeah, the sculpting of the little details on the sides are a little more precise on the resin kit, but I don't think it really warrants a huge difference. Um, one thing, in fact, I would say that is better in the Tamiya kit than the resin kit are the rails that go on the back of the seat here, okay? These railings are sculpted on the Tamiya kit very nicely. And on these, on the resin kit, it really is just kind of a U-beam. <laughs> There's no detail along the sides. And you're supposed to put this um, along the, the back of the seat here like this, okay? Like that and in fact you're supposed to have it so that the detail that you could see is facing the inside and so all there is is this little bump here right there there's a little bump and that's supposed to face outward it's, it's that bump right there and it's supposed to line up and go like this I thought that's really stupid there's no detail here and I got more detail in the Tamiya seat so what I did was I took my spare seat from the kit and I cut the railing off and I put that railing on this seat instead. And so I've got the actual Tamiya railings on the resin seat. And, well, they fit fine. There's no problem there. Um, seat belts took me about three days to do <laughs> because as I'm learning, I'm not really a big fan of photo etch seat belts even though they are highly detailed and very realistic and great scale uh, I don't like how difficult they are to manage and to deal with sure the finished product they look fantastic I'm gonna change my view again and I'll show you a close-up close-up of the seat here okay 
Um, so there's the seat, okay, with the seat belts in. And that's how it looks. Okay. Now, like I said, the detail is great. And the, the seat belts, yeah, they look great. You can see how they're, they're flipped, they're folded over and all that. They look like they're actually hanging there. So they're, they're great. Yeah, the detail is, is really great. Um, you get the top of the seat there, and the detail on that. And so there you go. Um, yeah. So that's that. Is it worth it? If all you want is a seat, I'd say no. <laughs> the seat alone does not make it worth it. And yeah, the, the cushion that they have here on the Tamiya seat, that's definitely from, you know, was it 1994 they designed this kit? So it, it makes sense that that is um, the design there. Obviously, they don't use those kind of cushions with that detail anymore. Can't really see because it's uh, black, but maybe you can see here a little bit better. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's the seat and the seat belts. And yeah, it took me a long time. Um, as far as the details in here, um, it's this panel goes on the side and it's nice and easy, and it's thick, and there's no problem, no issue. And that's other than the uh, I don't know, it's, it's a hydraulic shock for the canopy. That goes in the back wall there. That's simple, straightforward. And just a lot of detail painting on the inside of this thing. Um, I'm trying, it's going to be hard to get in the angles now that it's all assembled. Um, if it will focus for me, I'll try and get it to um, focus on the canopy here. So, I paint in the back in the avionics bay. I've painted all of those. Okay, those are all painted. But oh, I'm going off camera here. Where am I? Where am I? Um, that's all painted in there. As for this, the front instrumentation on each side, those are from that Red Fox Studios kit. I've put those in the front. As you saw me sanding those down on part one. Um, I have installed those now and so that's that um, this piece back here uh, right there this guy right here right there this guy the, that's actually from the Tamiya kit and it fits in there perfectly I don't know why they didn't include that in the resin kit but they didn't and so that's that and then, of course, um, putting on the side pieces. Let's get rid of that. These, these pieces here and here. Okay, those go on the sides. Again, pretty straightforward. Nothing special there. You have the, uh, the pedals on the front here. Um, those are two photo etched parts that go on two little rods. Um, again, pretty straightforward. You just super glue them together. And then of course you've got this back, this crossbar here that goes on the back, and that's about it. And so that therein is kind of the the resin cockpit. And uh, yeah, it's just a lot of detail to to do this, and that's about it. And then of course we have the main display panel again i've used the out of the kit this thing just drops down in there nice and fits pretty precisely and that's going to be it and there is aside from the seat going in there that's the finished cockpit and that's what's going to be going in in fact i can drop the seat down in there just like that and there we go we have a, a finished cockpit ready to be installed in the plane just like that and that's what we're going to be doing so 
that being said, this part is finished. Okay? So this is done. But this is not the Tamiya kit. This is all the resin stuff. Okay? We're going to be going through actually putting the Tamiya cockpit together now that I have everything painted the way I want it. But I still need to talk about how this is going to go in because the kit has this little bracing pieces and everything that this is supposed to go on here and you're actually supposed to you're actually supposed to put a couple of screws in here for your landing bay, uh, your front landing gear bay. That's going to would, would go here and get screwed in and screwed together. Why Tumia wants to put so many screws on this kit, I don't know. But that's what these big honking things are, is to put screws through and bolt this down on there. Obviously, you don't do that with the resin kit, right? So, they have all these things. There's this piece here where you got to put a screw through the top here, and that's going to screw this down in there like that and mount it in, okay, and you put your walls on and everything. So you've got a couple of little pieces along here, you've got details on the sides that kind of stick out a little bit and add more detail to the cockpit if you're putting the Tamiya cockpit in, which of course I'm not, but that being said, because this kind of drops in here um, and would sit roughly around like that, um, so they've got, they have detail that they molded in and sculpted all around in here for the cockpit. And I had to take my Dremel and I had to Dremel them all out and make them kind of smooth, as smooth as I could, but get rid of all these details so that this would actually fit flush against the wall and fit in there. Okay, you've got to get rid of all of it. Um, all of the all of the bracing and everything. The only piece of bracing I left was this for the front, as I wanted to give myself kind of a guide on how low or how high it, this needs to sit. And of course, I had to keep into consideration this thing needs to fit in here too, which it just everything fits just absolute snug and tight. And I actually wound up dremeling the sides of this down. I dremeled the bottom of it a little bit, shaved it, as you can see, let's put you over here, dremeled this down to shave it off a little bit, get a little less thickness, same with the both sides, I wound up having to dremel. I had painted this all black, <laughs> and now you can see all my dremeling is all just to make it thinner, just so I could fit the both halves together. It's still going to be pretty tight, but I can still, I can do it. I'll, I'll get away with it. So, that's kind of a rundown of what I've been doing all week. And so, we're going to actually get to putting this cockpit together here to do the actual Tamiya kit. Because my plan is, even though I'm putting the resin kit in the plane, I'm going to have a fully assembled cockpit outside of the plane. And do that. Unfortunately, I don't, don't have another one of these pieces. I don't know why uh, Ares didn't include this in the kit, because it's clearly part of it. And they had sculpted the little hole in the bottom here for it to go in, and it fit absolutely perfectly like it was made for it. Um, but why they didn't include it in the kit, I don't know. Um, I, I couldn't tell you. I really have no idea. So it looks like the first thing I want to do after putting the landing gear on the bottom of it, we're going to put in this little wall, and it's going to go like this, like that. So, let's get to work. that in we've got our I don't know what these are I wish you knew what these were called Tactic, it's the tactical electronic warfare system twos T 
twos. It's the twos. Tactical Electronic Warfare System. Okay, so um, the kit comes with these that you're supposed to slide in in the top there. Just what they want you to paint them all black, put paint your details on there, and just slide them through all of these little handles. But the the resin kit or the, the acrylic instrument set comes with each one of these little things so I put them on there so as you may have already guessed for the avionics bays I put used that kit for the Tamiya kit and then up front in the cockpit I put it in the resin kit um, yeah so this is just gonna go on here kind of test fitted it like a couple of times but I haven't really paid attention to where it actually makes contact everywhere. But that's okay. It's fine, it's fine. Now I might wind up painting this part uh, black. Let's see once I get this thing together. See, they show you all the details and all the different colors to paint these things. But this kit, you know, they're, they're already painted that for you. So it's like when you use them, you don't really have to paint anything. Next, we got the instrument panel. That is this guy here. And they want this guy glued at the top of it there. I'm actually going to take my glasses off. Just to help me with the small detail on lining that up. Okay. That's done. Now we've got a clear piece that goes on the back of it for a few of the a few of the gauges. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six gauges they have made in clear for you. So the lenses are clear. Uh, to me, it puts a decal in the kit to put on the back of it. I wasn't really happy with the way the decal looked. It kind of made the instruments look like they were lit up or, or something like that. But basically, why only those ones light up? Why are only those instruments actually working? So I, I first put the decal on, and I was like, you know what, that looks kind of dumb. So I took the deck, I scraped the decal off, and I just painted, um, painted them black in the little spots where they're going to go on behind there. And uh, yeah, that's good enough for me, um, just to do that. So we'll glue this on now. Don't need a lot of glue, and I don't want it kind of spreading around or anything like that. There we go. Okay. And so that makes those gauges look like they're nice, clear glass. And of course, um, I took my clear and I did clear on these other gauges, these tiny, tiny ones. So they're all nice and shiny where they should be. One thing I noticed, the sculpt of this doesn't have the big display screen here like they do on the modern F-15s. So obviously this is an older model. I mean, I was reading at the front of the book here just the history on this thing. The F-15 took its maiden flight in 1969. Like, 69? That's how old this plane is? Like, that's crazy. And it finally made its its um, actual, like, debut. It's made in flight in 72. And in November 74, the F-15A was deployed. Like, wow. Um, finally, in 79, they came out with the F-15C. In 79 they still use these things today it's 2022 like <laughs> I can't believe they still use this plane 
it's it's obviously it's the best plane in the world, right? <laughs> it's no wonder. But yeah, holy crap. A plane that was designed so long ago. Okay. Anyway, I'm rambling. We have the flight control stick. That's better go in. And this goes down. Let's see. Is that going to go just to test fit? Yeah, it's going to go like this. sticks in the middle where it should be okay there we go uh, next we've got our little bar on the back here so can get the chip the paint I need to chip the paint and get extra paint on it there we go fixed Okay, so it's got a couple little guide pins to guide it in place. And that just sits on the top. Just like that. Now, we take our instrument panels on the sides and they go into these little slots. There's one side. side. Okay. So those are on. Now we move to the back. We have our back wall and our hydraulics, hydraulic shock. Now I have to admit um, I think, to me, I may have sculpted their hydraulic shock better than the one in the resin kit. And what I mean by that is the resin kit, the, there's these little tiny tubes that kind of go on each side of this, uh, the hydraulic shock here. Um, and on the resin kit, it was almost like it sculpted and then they were kind of just right, almost glued and yet I kind of had to put my knife to kind of break them free so they were separate. Whereas with the Tamiya kit, it was sculpted perfectly and I didn't have to do anything like that. So this now is going to go on the back, but it's got nothing to, there's no guide on the side. So it just sits like this. There's no real definitive. Hmm. Hmm. Now I confess I did not test fit this back wall piece. There's nothing to, like, it's got a little lip here, but it doesn't, you know, go into a slot of anything. It's just kind of wherever it feels like. 
and that ain't no good to me. So let's move on. What's funny is the next step here now is to put the wheels as uh, landing gear together and not put the final wall on. <laughs> Why wouldn't they want the wall done right now? Ah, oh, okay, so we're going to start doing the front landing gear. We do that, we assemble the seat. Okay. We assemble our seat with all the parts pertaining to it, put the pilot on it, and put the seat in the cockpit. So I can put the seat in the cockpit now. Let's see here. Everything lined up. It seems a bit high. Ah, there we go. Okay. All right. I'm only going to put glue on the bottom, I'm not going to put any on the back. younger days I totally would have glued the back as well but I don't think it's that necessary as long as I get enough glue on the bottom it'll hold it and there we have that and now that the pilot is in they actually want me putting the sidewall into the side so this had a, a little notch that was sticking out there um, that's going to go into this little locator. So you, you locate this on the wall first and then put the cockpit together. But what I want to do is I want to put this on here first if I can. since this is all going to be its own thing. So I've got contact there and just at the tip there. And that's it. Okay. So we can take that off. A little bit of contact here, and then all along here. All right. There's our two sidewalls done. And now I can deal with this back wall a little better. Because it doesn't seem to really make a lot of contact anywhere. It's a little bit funky. In fact, it contacts just along the bottom and at the very tip of this. It doesn't even contact this at all. Like, not at all. If I want to have this as like some kind of a little display cockpit, I might add some, I don't know, some styrene sheets to it or something. Kind of enclose it a little bit, maybe. I'll have to wait and see. Because this piece isn't actually going in the plane, it doesn't really matter too much. And of course, this big piece coming off the bottom is going to have to 
cut that off, otherwise it's just going to sit <laughs> sit like that, and it would be kind of weird that it's not sitting flat. And that's it. Other than this piece here, which would go like that, but I've got no nothing to support it at the front. So I could, although I can put it on, it's got nothing to support it at all. Although I'm tempted to put, try and glue it like that. It feels like it might stay. I think that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a shot. I'm going to give it a shot. I can actually see where it connects back here. Whether I can get in there with a brush with the glue. I think that'll do it. Maybe let it sit like this for a minute. Maybe put a little more glue at the back here because it's kind of falling apart. There you have it, guys. <laughs> the uh, the cockpit's done. So, really, the next step for me is to get both sides of the cockpits put both sides of the fuselage put together with the cockpit I'm actually putting in the plane uh, in the plane. Right? Makes sense. So, we have this, and we have this. Now, I haven't glued this in, but I should. I think it's about time to glue this thing in. So, with the resin, of course, I need to use crazy glue, or CA glue. I think it's made enough contact. It's going to hold it. Okay. So with that being done, I want to check something here. Okay. 
this needs to go in here and because this is on here it's going to force this all the way to the back wall it's the only spot it fits now they were they were good in their sculpting of this thing it, they made it fit super tight almost too tight and that's why I had to do a lot of shaving on it but in in that sense it's also good that it's that tight because it doesn't flop around on you and you're not trying to hunt for the sweet spot of where it's supposed to go right so as you can see if I get the nose lined up there it's a little bit tight but it'll go I'll have to like glue it and hold it and same with the back it's got that little bit of a gap I just have to squeeze that little bit right just a little bit and same same down here got to squeeze just a little bit not too tight not too hard but just enough I, I, that I I need to squeeze it if I want to eliminate that gap that's going to be my next step is actually doing this but I gotta go back before I make this permanent I gotta see because to me I want so many screws um, do I need to screw in uh, anything in the landing gear before I make this thing permanent it looks like I do actually put a screw through through the sidewall back here it's almost like the landing gear is going to be functional can actually retract it the, the fact that they want to screw put through the side there almost like an axle but then you were gluing it in a fixed spot on the front here so my theory is gone um, that's going to be next so I've got to get to painting my uh, landing gear pieces because they're all metal notice I kept this one 1.4 by 3 tapping screw in nose gear section on page 7 this is page 8 on page 7 of instructions has been replaced by a 1.4 by 4 screw refer to this diagram when assembling okay I am just curious if the diagram is the same and it is the diagrams the same the screw looks a little tiny bit different it looks like it's got a fine thread here and this is a coarse thread well it's a tapping screw one point four by three this is one point four by four and this is not a tapping screw so there's our difference but anyway I need to paint these pieces first they need to be white so that's our landing gear pieces here the one in question is this guy this is the front so I need, want to spray them with some Mr. Surfacer and uh, then paint them white. So I'm not really set up to paint yet. So I'm going to do that. Um, but I'm not just not going to do it right now. Uh, what can we do here? I have to paint huh? all this painting. There's so much paint prep. Um, before I can actually assemble everything I've got to get stuff painted so that's going to be my project for the next uh, few hours is doing some painting uh, which there's no point in you guys watching that so I'm going to end this video here and uh, get to getting my landing gear ready to be assembled and get my two halves of fuselage put together here so we're going to leave it like that for now guys 
there's what our resin cockpit is going to look like inside and here's what the Tamiya cockpit looks like on the outside <laughs> they both look good they both got lots of detail um, I can't say I really have any complaints over the Tamiya version other than as far as a modern if you go see an F-15 in an air show today the buttons and dials are going to look different um, than in the kit they're going to look more like this one right because this one's more modern this is a late version uh, cockpit and this is obviously an early version um, yeah so we're going to leave it at that and uh, yeah so like you may have just heard if my music was loud enough um, hit the like button there's a like button down there you can hit that hit the like button if you like my videos and if you like them enough um, maybe over on this side hit the subscribe button um, that would help out too and have an go into the look take a look at the little description box below and you see a link to my twitch and uh, you can follow me on twitch and you could watch me live and if you're watching me live you could actually comment in the comment box here while i'm live and we can have a conversation i can talk to you and you can ask me questions and uh, give me pointers and uh, tell me i'm pretty um, all that good stuff <laughs> but yeah we're gonna leave it at that for today guys I got a bunch of spray painting to do and a bunch of prep um, before I can continue with the actual assembly and so yeah I'm gonna leave that there for today and uh, we'll see hopefully next weekend we can get to assembling this a little bit more so I want to thank you guys again thanks for coming out thanks for watching Thanks for joining me. It's always a pleasure. Reading the comments that you guys put on my videos is really, um, you guys are really supportive and that's really awesome. And I'm glad that I can help you guys out. Um, it, it's, you know, it's why I'm doing this. If I can give you guys some tips and pointers and stuff like that along the way and help you um, do things that maybe you're hesitant to do, then I think I'm doing something good, right? Um, that's kind of why I do this um, so yeah so uh, we'll leave it there today and thanks again and hit that like and that subscribe button do you know like everybody asks it's what we always want helps us out with the whole YouTube algorithm kind of stuff whatever um, but yeah thanks guys and uh, we'll see you all on the next one